It's the Montreal Expos against the New York Mets for the second time in as many weeks in New York. Last week, the Mets took two of three from Montreal. Bob Davidson is behind home plate for this game tonight. The rest of the crew of umpires, Greg Bonin at first, Doug Harvey at second, and Frank Pulley works at third. It is a battle for first in the National League East, and the battle may go on all summer long, and we baseball fans can only hope so. The Cubs are very much in the thick of it, but have lost three straight. The Expos have won four in a row. The Mets have won four in a row, and the Expos three in a row. A half back of Chicago and New York, and St. Louis is still very much in the picture, Ken. Right now, these three or four ball clubs have really pulled away from Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. The Phillies have really been struggling. The Pirates have had their problems of late, too. But later on in the season, you might see those ball clubs at the bottom acting as spoilers against those four teams you see near the top of the division. In the National League West, there could be a great battle, although San Francisco is trying to pull away from the pack. Now that they can team Big Daddy with Bedrock, Rick Rushell and Steve Bedrosian, San Francisco may be tough to catch. The Houston Astros will follow the Mets here into the Big O, and as the Expos start playing against Western Division competition once again following this Mets series. But tonight at the Big O, all eyes will be on Pascal Perez, Doc Gooden, the New York Mets, and the Montreal Expos. Here's 32-year-old Pascal Perez from San Cristobal in the Dominican Republic. He hasn't started in nine days, although he did pitch briefly against the Mets. Through one time in relief against New York, Buck Rogers getting him some work in that series. And Pascual has been throwing the ball well of late after a very shaky start this season. His best pitch is the slider. Look for that slider down and away from the right-handed hitters. He loves to throw it to left-handed hitters as well, trying to get it in on their hands. The Expos face the New York Mets, and the Mets are seven above 500. They've won four straight, and they're still without Gary Carter, Keith Hernandez, and Daryl Strawberry. Strawberry has a sore foot. He's here but he won't play, not likely to play till the weekend. They're hitting 240 as a team, ninth in the National League, and this is a tough lineup, but not a lot of averages, averages that will scare anyone. Samuel at 238, Jeffries 228, Wilson 200, Lions 242, Elster 206. They're still tough, though. They're still the Mets, and they're on a roll. Well, they have their home run bats working of late. They've hit a number of home runs. The hottest of all the hitters is Howard Johnson, right in the middle of the Mets lineup. It'll be interesting to watch and see if the Mets try and play any games with Pasquale Perez as we take a look at the defensive lineup. Defensively for Montreal, Andres Calarraga, Tom Foley, Spike Owen, and Tim Wallach around the infield. Reigns, Dave Martinez in center, swinging a very hot bat. Yubi Brooks in right. Yubi says it's time to get some RBIs. He's been doing the job. Nelson Sanovania catching and Pasquale Perez, the entertainer on the hill. What I mean by playing games with Pasquale Perez, I wonder if the Mets will try and have the umpires check and see if he's using a foreign substance on the ball. It's worked for some teams to throw Pasquale off in the past. Keep it in mind as this game moves along. Juan Samuel hasn't been in the lineup for the last few days because he was off in the Dominican Republic. And already Bob Davidson wants to have a look at one of the baseballs as this started awfully early. Well, the fans here in Montreal respond in kind. Pasquale now wants to change the ball. Give me another one. If you don't like what I'm doing with this one, give me a fresh one and let's get going. And the crowd cheers. That's a good counter for Pasquale to get things started. Samuel has been back in the Dominican Republic. His wife gave birth to their first daughter. So he had a few days off and is back in the lineup leading off. And behind 0-1. Pasquale drops a slider over the outside corner. Samuel coming over in the big deal with the Phillies and... Hasn't really burned it up for the Mets, hitting just 0-91 since he's reported to New York. The Mets sending Lenny Dykstra, an outfielder, and Roger McDowell, a relief pitcher, down to the Phillies. But he's had just 11 at-bats. And when I say down to the Phillies, I mean down to the Phillies. They're, they're in the basement. It was a rude homecoming for McDowell and Dykstra on the weekend as the Phillies lost all three to Davey Johnson and the New York Mets. Keeping this team together, even though some of the veteran leaders are out of the lineup. One-two to Samuel, and he struck out. Great start for Pasquale Perez, one away. You know, Mets advanced scout Dick Gurnett was in town, and he was here when Don Zimmer, the Cubs, checked. 
Pasquale Perez on the mound, and the Cubs responded with two successive doubles to drive in some runs against Pasquale, so maybe the Mets and other teams feel by checking Pasquale, you can throw him off of his game. Well, Pasquale had an answer for Juan Samuel. K, take that. Here's Dave Magadan, the first baseman who's taken over for Keith Hernandez. And Pasquale seems to be at his bouncy best as he's into his gyrations on the mound already. Well, there's a pretty good crowd in here for a Monday night at the Big O. And they seem to be fired out with Pasquale on the mound. They usually are. Magadan gets the first hit off Pasquale Perez. This will be for extra bases down into the right field corner. Magadan is holding up at second. It's a stand-up double. And the Mets with one out have a runner in scoring position. Well, Dave Magadan is now hitting 11 of his last 12 ball games. He's hitting 382 over this stretch. And the Expos playing him off the line, not expecting him to pull the ball. But it looked like an off-speed pitch over the inner half. And Magadan drilled it into the right field corner to continue his hot hitting. Not the fastest of the Mets. He doesn't hit a lot of doubles. But that's his ninth of the season. And here's the Expo killer, Howard Johnson. Hitting 500 against the Montreal Expos in 12 games this season. Up the middle, on the ground for Spike Owen. He goes over to first and gets Johnson. Advancing to third on the play was Magadan, two away. The Expos were playing somewhat of a shift on Howard Johnson. That ball was hit almost directly through the middle. Spike going well over towards second base. Comes up with the play. The big yeah, He has to give the big cat some credit first. He dragged that one out of the dirt for him. The Expos this season are averaging 17,784 and hope their attendance will pick up considerably now that summer is here and they're in the midst of a pennant race and now that this stadium is fully retractable. They've completed the tests on the roof and they should be able to play outdoor baseball anytime they want. But the forecast tonight was for some thunder showers so the roof is on. One and one to Kevin McReynolds, the cleanup hitter. He's in Daryl Strawberry's spot while Strawberry's foot is on the men. Well, that was the roof, folks. That was not the inside of a basketball. <laughs> now, the opposition has been checking Pasquale Perez. Not after his slider. It's after his fastball. They seem to feel it has extra movement on it. There it is. Sinking fastball. And I believe it's all in the way that Pasquale is delivering his fastball as opposed to the pass. Now he's more or less side-arming it up to the plate, and that's how he gets the extra sink on it. Watch the ball tail into the middle of the plate. He got away with that. That wasn't a particularly good pitch to somebody like McReynolds. McReynolds pops the ball up in center field. Dave Martinez makes the catch. And by the time that ball was in Martinez's glove, Pasquale Perez was already in the Expo dugout. How confident he was. 12 pitches. One of them went out into right field for a double. One hit. And the runner was stranded by Pasquale Perez. The Expos are coming to the plate against Doc Gooden. This is Labatt Expos Baseball on TSN. 24-year-old Dwight Doc Gooden last week became the third youngest player ever to get to 100 wins. And he did it at the expense of the Montreal Expos. He starts against them again tonight. Doc Gooden basically, I guess you could call him a two-pitch pitcher. So those two pitchers are extraordinary. A fantastic fastball and a tremendous, as the players call it, yellow hammer or curveball. He also throws a cut fastball occasionally and a changeup, but those aren't as good as those other two top pitches. The Expos are six games above 500, hitting 244 as a team, tied for fifth in the National League. They hit 284 on the weekend against Chicago. The top home run man is Galarraga with 11. He's also the top RBI man with 45. The high average belongs to Tim Raines at 288. This season, Montreal is hitting just 208 in games against the New York Mets. The teams are 3-3 three and three in the six games they've played so far. Dave Magadan, Greg Jeffries, Kevin Elster, Howard Johnson in the infield. Kevin McReynolds, Juan Samuel. Mookie Wilson in right field in place of the injured Darryl Strawberry. Barrett Lyons behind the plate. 
And Dwight Gooden, a very good fielder on the mound. Dave Martinez not only had a great weekend hitting 500 against his old team in Chicago, he comes into this game with a great average against Dwight Gooden. 286 lifetime against Gooden, and that's very good against one of the league's toughest pitchers. And he says it's because he concentrates extra hard when the good doctor is pitching. Gooden popped him up in center field. Juan Samuel makes the catch, and there's one away. Well, Gooden has held the rest of the league to just a 2.06 batting average. So you figure any time you go up against a, a pitcher like a Dwight Gooden as a hitter, you really have to concentrate. I always love the challenge of hitting against the better pitchers because you knew they're going to have good stuff. You had to be on your game to get any type of hitting against them. And you knew that every run that you scored was going to be a big one. Tom Foley hasn't had great success against Gooden. He pops the ball up off the fist and is gone in a hurry in his 167 average against Gooden. That will drop a little lower. There's quickly two away for the dock. Hasn't worked in a week. His start was pushed back because the Mets have been worried about a tender right shoulder. Hasn't had a complete game this year. His longest outing is eight innings. Well, he worked just seven innings against the Expos. And in previous years, you might have seen Doc Gooden go into the eighth and ninth inning for sure in those particular ball games. Because his pitch count wasn't high, he held the Expos in check. Andres Galarraga, another Expo, fares well against Gooden. There are a few of them. Martinez is one. Galarraga is 333 lifetime against Gooden, and Hubie Brooks owns the man at 359 lifetime against Dwight Gooden. Galarraga homered off Gooden at Shea Stadium. A blast well over 400 feet to deepest right center field past the scoreboard. That was in the first inning. The Mets went on to win that ball game 5 to 3. Galarraga's opened up his stance. Gives him a better look at the pitches. He hasn't been chasing as many pitches, especially that breaking ball low and away and that high fastball. He's been laying off both of them, and consequently, he's been getting ahead on the count more. His average has been coming up, and he's really been driving in a lot of runs of late. 2 1 pitches, foul back 2 and 2. You mentioned the high fastball, and with a pitcher like Gooden, and I think of Nolan Ryan, any other power pitchers, Roger Clemens, isn't that the toughest thing for the hitter to? lay off the high fastball you really have to be very quick upstairs to, to get on top of a 90 mile per hour fastball and, and the best you can hope for is just to foul it off most times there's a fantastic breaking ball strike three it's too much to hope for to get a piece of that foul it off do anything watch this just fall off a table maybe ended up out of the strike zone eight pitches for Doc Gooden Four better than Pasquale, and the extra day off seems to have done Dwight Gooden some good. Uh, he's packing his best stuff to the park tonight. This is Labatt Expos Baseball on TSN. There were some new developments in the Pete Rose against baseball or baseball against Pete Rose case today. The Office of the Baseball Commissioner announced that its attorneys have filed an appeal and a motion to stay the temporary restraining order issued to Cincinnati Reds manager Pete Rose yesterday by Judge Norbert Nadell. But also today, Nadell agreed to make public the 225-page report prepared by the baseball investigator, John Dowd, on Rose's alleged gambling activity. And you see some of the things that Rose is alleged to have done as Pasquale Perez works against the New York Mets in the top of the second inning. The report claiming that Rose bet $2,000 a game on baseball games, in particular Reds games during 85, 86 in the 87 seasons. Greg Jeffries is the batter against Pasquale Perez. Yeah, the rules are very specific uh, governing gambling and baseball, and it, I think we've mentioned this before in the air. Every year, the players get a, get a speech by either the general manager or the, or the manager on opening day regarding gambling and activities and hanging around with people who have been known gamblers and they're very clear if you you bet on baseball you're suspended for one year if you bet on your own ball club you're suspended for life 
Greg Jeffries fouled off a Pasquale Perez pitch. He's 0-2. You may find it odd that this report by John Dowd was released before there's been a ruling on the case, but it was released because of an order from the Supreme Court of Ohio in response to a suit from the Cleveland Plain Dealer, a newspaper that wanted it released and went to court to get that report released, and it happened today. So the 225-page report is out, and tomorrow when you pick up the newspaper, you'll see the highlights or the lowlights, depending on how you look on this, in there. You have to have a feeling that the Cleveland Plain Dealer is going to be extra thick tomorrow morning. Yeah. Oh, and two to rookie Greg Jeffries, who's picking up his pace considerably as he fouls a pitch off and out of play. And the count stays 0-2. Jeffries, in his last dozen games, is hitting 356, and his average is only up to 228. It's a long climb when you start in a big hole. Earlier in the season, Jeffries' dad watches the ball games on either cable or satellite dish out in California, and he's been Greg's coach his whole life. And hitting coach Bill Robinson felt there's only room for one hitting coach. And mm -hmm. So he went out and had breakfast with Mr. Jeffries, while the Mets were out on the West Coast, they had a nice discussion. <laughs> Did he burn his toast? Well, no, not in particular, but uh, Bill Robinson and the, and Greg's dad came to more or less of an agreement that, uh, you know, they'll talk things over before they actually rely on a situation that's going to help Greg out. But whatever they decided, it's been helping him recently. Strikeout number two for Pascual Perez. He'll need some help if he's going to hit that pitch. Well, this ball is not even a strike. Pasquale, with that deadly slider, mentioned that he would throw it at any time, particularly to right-handers, and in on the hands of left-handed hitters. Make it look like a fastball, and all of a sudden it disappears. There's the reaction from Pasquale on the mound. Now he'll face the switch hitter, Mookie Wilson. Right down the middle and right back up the middle. The second hit off Pasquale Perez. A one out single for Mookie Wilson who needed that to stay above 200. The hitters call that a key at bat. Whether you're hitting 299 or 199. A hit can drive you over to 200 mark. Mookie needed a hit to stay above 200 or stay at that 200 mark. He's now above it. You have to watch him at first base. He's the all-time leader from the Mets in stolen bases. Playing in right field because, of course, Strawberry's out of the lineup. Mookie more or less in the same situation he didn't want to be in uh, when Glenn Dykstra was with the ball club. Mookie might even see less action now with Juan Samuel and McReynolds and, and Strawberry taking over the three outfield spots. Catcher is Barry Lyons. He and Mackie Sasser platoon with Carter out of the lineup. And Pasquale throws him strike one, 0 and 1. Wilson has stolen four. He's been caught twice. And when told of the Dykstra trade, it might have been the good news and the bad news. Good news is the platoon partner Dykstra's been traded. The bad news, we've got an everyday center fielder in return. A lead with one foot on the carpet. Lyons is in trouble 0 and 2 with one out. Lions currently in the hole at 0-2, and, and you know this is a situation that hitters dread. The pitcher can do just about anything he wants. He can move you off the plate. He can throw it low and away. He can even try and sneak a strike by you. Off the end of the bat could be two. Owen oh, turning the double play, and Pasquale Perez is out of the second inning. And once again, by the time the play was finished, Perez was almost in the dugout. Well, pitcher can do just about anything and try and also trying to get you hit into a double play. Two hopper. Lions does not run well down the first base line. Spike Owen with plenty of time to turn to double play. 4-6-3. Perez is free in this pitching matchup. Is everything it's been billed to be so far. This is Labatt Expos Baseball on TSN. This day in history, I'm sure there was an awful lot of things that happened on 
this day, June the 26th in history, but an interesting one in baseball on the 26th of June, 1944, the Dodgers, the Yankees, and the Giants played a three-way exhibition game to raise money for war bonds. And Well, there you see the final score. They'd play each other, be the Dodgers and the Yankees, and then the next inning, the Dodgers and the Giants, and then the Yankees and the Giants, and the Dodgers came out winners in this three-team game. Sort of like a one-game round-robin tournament. Yeah, sort of like that. Okay. <laughs> That'd be fun to do, wouldn't it? Instead of the All-Star game, maybe have four or five teams. It's like a baseball version of a WWF elimination battle. <laughs> the Battle Royale for a cage match. Exactly. Speaking of WWF, Tim Raines a big wrestling fan. One of the biggest. Rock. Likes the Macho Man, I think. Randy Savage? Is that his name? I don't know. I don't know either. Yeah, well. <laughs> Rest assured, there are thousands of people out there saying to their TV, yeah, it is, or no, it isn't. Are you? <laughs> 2-0 to Raines, who had a great day yesterday. It's three for four. Went seven for 13, 538 for the weekend against Chicago. No wonder the Expos were winners. And he hits that ball a long ways, but it's nothing but a strike and a souvenir. Two balls and a strike to Reigns. Since he moved into the cleanup spot in 28 games, his batting average is 280. And since he moved to the cleanup spot, he's stolen only six bases. So maybe his stolen base total will be down this year. But he may end up with more RBIs. Hard to find that interesting combination of cleanup hitter and great speed. I don't know that there is a record because, well, players moved around so much. You can't find in baseball history books a record for the most stolen bases by a cleanup hitter. Reigns ripped it down the line. Magadan will handle it. And Reigns is gone. But I guess you can look back to a player like Willie Mays. Great combination of power, RBIs, speed. Jose Canseco, but more or less Canseco batted third. Third, McGuire for it. Willie Mays was a cleanup hitter at times, but I would say for most of his career, he batted third also. With but McCovey behind him? Exactly, McCovey, Orlando Cepeda. It's, a, it's very difficult to find that combination. Uh, maybe a Mickey Mantle. Mm -hmm. Mantle didn't have to steal with the power that the Yankee lineup had in those years. Certainly the best combination of those two that the Expos have had of a, out of a cleanup hitter. They had you know, Carter and you think of Bailey. Back to Hal Breeden, Ron Fairley, Al Oliver. Probably the man who hit in the cleanup spot at times and stole the most bases was Ellis Valentine. Had as many as 13 stolen bases in a season, batting some cleanup. Maybe the Hawk, Andre Dawson. Yes. Hubie Brooks with the first hit off Doc Gooden, and he continues to own Gooden. He came into this game with a 359 average against Doc, and he's just pumped it up a bit more. Doc Gooden target out over the plate. Hubie Brooks hit it like he called for it himself. A rocket into the gap in right center. Juan Samuel did a good job of running that down and holding Hubie to a long single. It's remarkable how well he has hit one of the best pitchers in the game. Tim Wallach with a man at first and one away. We're in the bottom of the second inning. No score. Gooden and Perez, the Expos and the Mets on TSN from the Olympic Stadium in Montreal. Wallach had a three for nine weekend. He checks some signals with Jackie Moore. Ball and a strike. You know, when visiting players go into Wrigley Field, I guess you have to perk up a little bit. You see those fences in the alleys just <laughs> 368 feet away. If the wind is blowing out, you know, all you have to do is get it up in the air, and you, you count on maybe putting one into the netting. Of course, the fans back there throw the ball back. <laughs> I thought the best example of the fans at Wrigley Field throwing a ball back this year. Howard Johnson hit one completely out of Wrigley Field. Yeah. Across the street. 
some fan across the street picked the ball up, threw it back into the bleachers, and the fans in the bleachers threw it back on the field. Maybe that, the only relay throwback. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Had good timing. Looked like they had worked on it for a few days before the Cubs came came home on that homestand. <laughs> Brooks at first, two and one on Wallach at the plate. Nelson Santavania on deck. Wallach didn't hit any out on the weekend. He hasn't hit a home run in a month, a month and a day. Brooks yeah. is on the run. High inside pitch. The throw by Lyons and Hubie Brooks is safely down. To second base with his fourth stolen base of the season. That was almost a hit batsman. Well, Yubi Brooks has only stolen four bases. He's been thrown out seven times. This was a hit and run. No chance for Wallach to make contact, pitch underneath his chin, but it also helped Yubi get into second base. Kind of a tough pitch for the catcher to handle. See how much that Barry Lyons has to stretch to make the catch of that pitch by Dwight Good. The Expos now with a runner in scoring position. And Wallach hits the ball straight up the middle, but it's a line drive. Brooks hustles back to second base. A line drive caught by Juan Samuel. Heads up base running by UB Brooks at second base, not leaving too soon. When you get out the second base bag, you have to look around, check to see where the outfielders are playing. So you know almost as soon as the ball is hit that if they have a shot at it, that's the reason why Yubi held up at second base, didn't try and score on that ball. That was a well-hit ball right up the middle, but wouldn't drop in for Tim Wallach. Now there are two away, and the runners in scoring position for Nelson Santavania, who's hit well against the Mets, a 327 average against New York this season. Now, of course, with two outs, you will be off and running on anything hit. The Expos trying to score first and scratch out a run. They'll be tough to come by tonight against Doc Gooden. The stolen base will help. I think you'll see Davey Johnson and Buck Rogers try a little bit of everything tonight to try and get a run because a run or two might be all that it takes to win this game. You mentioned Doc Gooden getting his 100th career victory against the Expos last week in New York. Interesting number on Dwight Gooden. In his 100 victories, 94 of them, he's given up three or fewer runs. Wow. And he's never, ever in his career had a losing record, not even 0-1. So he's been a dominant pitcher. 100 wins against just 37 losses. He's never had a losing season as a pro. He was 5-5 five and five at A-ball in 1982, and that's as close as he got to being under 500 as a pro. And here he gave up a hit to an old nemesis, Hubie Brooks, but then he got Wallach to hit the line drive to center, and Nelson Santavania has struck out. Strikeout victim number two. Ed Gooden has the Expos in the second. Scoreless after two from the big O. This is Labatt Expos Baseball on TSN. Maybe the busiest guy around the Mets locker room this season has been Steve Garland, the trainer. What with Hernandez, Carter, Strawberry, Tuffle, all hurt recently? We went to him for uh, the doctor's report. Carter had that uh, knee scoped about a month ago now. The rehab is coming along very nicely. He's doing that rehab in Long Island. Uh, Gary is probably three weeks or uh, 17, uh, excuse me, 24 days from playing. He's doing very well. He's very pleased with the progress he's making. And of course, getting Kid back uh, down the stretch is going to help us a lot. Then there's Keith Hernandez, who fractured his kneecap, uh, oh, about uh, six weeks ago. No, excuse me, five weeks ago now against the Dodgers. Uh, that's mending very nicely. Keith started jogging today. Hopefully next week he'll start sprinting, and we hope him to uh, be back about the same time as Carter. Uh, of course, you all know about Dwight Gooden's stiffness in his shoulder. That was a rear uh, back of the shoulder. Uh, at first, he was a little bit concerned about it, but we reassured him that it was just tightness. Uh, Doc has worked hard. Uh, he's worked very diligently in stretching and doing the exercises, and so we feel like uh, he's not going to have any more problems. Uh, Kevin McReynolds separated some cartilage from his rib cage uh, oh, about three weeks ago. It's been bothering him a lot on inside pitches, but he's coming along nicely now as well. 
And then there's Daryl Strawberry, who fractured the uh, little toe of his right foot uh, last week against the Expos. Uh, it's causing him a great deal of pain, and uh, the doctors just feel like it's a day-to-day -day situation with Straw. Uh, hopefully he'll be uh, ready, maybe the last game here or the uh, first game in Cincinnati this weekend. Whew, what a busy guy, that Doc Garland. Sounds like he should be in a MASH unit. <laughs> Conferring with one of his patients, as you saw on the bench. So there's an interesting dilemma as Kevin Elster stands at the plate with a count of a ball and two strikes facing Pasquale Perez. Here's the one two pitch fly ball left center field way back is Reigns. He's onto the track. He's at the wall and this ball is out of the park. A home run for Kevin Elster. Just the second home run of the season for Elster, and the Mets are on the board. Early in the season, recall back the first week of the season when the Mets were in here to play the Expos in Montreal, Elster was one of the hottest of the Met hitters. Well, since that time, his average has plummeted down to the low 200s, barely over 200. But he got something he could drive on that pitch and ran it right out of the big O. But he'd hit so well against the Expos this season. 300 against Montreal, and now he gets a home run that ends the Expos' shutout inning streak at 24. It's the first run scored against Montreal pitching since back on Friday in Chicago. Elster has his second, and when you don't hit him very often, there's a good reason to smile. Perez comes back with a strikeout against Gooden for the first out of the third, his third strikeout. Well, Elster's one of the most surprised people in the ballpark that that went out. It's been a long time between homers for Elster. Between hits when you're hitting 206. Juan Samuel, the leadoff man, is back at the plate. He's up with one out and his team leading one to nothing against the Expos and Pasquale Perez. There's the Pasquale pitch. That blooper and he threw it for a strike, 0 oh 2. He saved it for one of his countrymen. Samuel, also from Dominican Republic. And <laughs> that would have been legal in a slow pitch game. He had enough arc. <laughs> And he chases the slider, and Samuel has struck out four strikeouts for Perez. That's an at-bat he'd like to forget. Following the Pasquale pitch, the nasty slider low and away. What an interesting array of pitches he used against Samuel. <laughs> it's almost comical whenever he throws that, but it's very effective. You ever be at the plate when a pitcher threw one of those, eh? No, I had... Gaylord Perry throw a, a puff ball. What about uh, would you ever been around for Bill Lee in his space ball? He never threw me one of those. I was a good <laughs> I was a good off speed hitter. <laughs> a puff ball by Gaylord Perry. He loaded his hand up with rosin, and when he threw the ball, his big puff of smoke came out. <laughs> I was just thankful he didn't try and cheat with that other pitch that he used to throw, that admitted spitter. And Gaylord Perry, 300 game winner. It worked once, so why not try it again? Slow motion from Pasquale, a ball and a strike now, with two away and the Mets leading one to nothing. If there's such a thing as taking too much off of a pitch, that was it. Only 55 feet. Yeah, didn't quite make it at 35 miles an hour. But it made that fastball even more effective. Yep. Magadan was late. Ball and two strikes to Dave Magadan. Now you heard Steve Garland's report on the injuries. When Hernandez and Carter come back, what happens to Dave Magadan? Magadan has hit 349 since Hernandez was hurt. Does Hernandez automatically get his spot back? Does Gary Carter automatically go behind the plate where Barry Lyons and Mackie Sasser have done a good job? The team's winning without Hernandez and Carter. It's very interesting because if they do choose to leave Magadan in the lineup, does that tell Keith Hernandez that he won't be back next year? Mm. 
Now they've gone to three catchers before and they could do that again and still get Gary Carter the playing time. But both Carter and Hernandez in the last years of their contract. Even without them, the Mets are in the battle for first place in the East. Sharply hit ground ball to Galarraga. Pasquel covers and gets the job done, tosses the ball away, and hits for the dugout one more time. He's given up a hit in each inning, a double, a single, and in the third, a home run to light-hitting Kevin Elster. And here's how he finished off the inning. Galarraga to Perez, and the Mets are finished in the third. One to nothing, New York on the Elster home run. This is the Bat Expos baseball on TSN. Well, Kenny, the Expos shutout inning streak is over at 24. It was 24 innings. Nine belonged to Kevin Gross. A three-hit shutout of the Cubs on Saturday. He needed that. He hadn't been pitching very well going to that ball game. The Mets had hammered him in his previous start. And been really struggling with his control, but he really got it together against Chicago. Very aggressive on the mound, went right after the hitters. Something that uh, pitching coach Larry Bernard and manager Buck Rogers had in mind when they got Kevin Gross from the Phillies over the winter. And you got to figure he's going to be a big part of this Expos rotation going down the stretch. Uh, we're not even halfway home yet, but the way this pennant race is shaping up, they're going to need all the help they can get. Spike Owen, the switch inning shortstop. He is the leadoff man, 0 for 8 on the weekend, and he's only 2 for 17 in the last week, but he did score four runs. He walks and often scores, and he's up against Gooden here, and the count is 2 and 0. So Gooden became the third youngest pitcher to get to 100 wins. The other two were Frank Noodles Hahn, turn of the century Cincinnati Reds pitcher, and, of course, Bob Feller, the great Cleveland pitcher of the late 30s and the 40s. And I was looking back to see what kind of pitchers they were. Noodles Hahn was a power pitcher. He struck out a lot. But catch this. In one season, back in 1901, he started 42 games and finished 41 of them. He pitched 375 innings that season, and he gave up 368 hits. So he threw a lot of pitches, and it really took its toll on his arm. By 1905, 1906, he was down to four and five wins a season <laughs> and just his arm just ran right out of gas well I would think so after throwing how many innings did you say it was 375 one season in those days relief pitchers were not what they yeah. are now and uh, pitchers more or less would go out there and take a pounding throughout the game Ooh. This doctor does not play golf on Mondays. Mm -mm. So Noodles Hahn won 20 games four times. Bob Feller won 20 games six times. And he, like Gooden, like Noodles Hahn, is a power pitcher. Feller won 266 games in his career, starting in the late 30s. But it took 45 years for a younger man than Feller to come along and win 100 games. Spike Owen hits a fly ball to left and Kevin McReynolds and there's one away and that made me think about how long it will be before someone younger than Gooden that comes along will get to 100 wins. It's quite conceivable but he'd have to be a great pitcher on a very good team like Gooden and everything would have to be just about perfect. He'd have to win well like Gooden win a lot and win early. I mean, Gooden was 63 games above 500 at 100 wins. So maybe 45 <laughs> before it happens again. It's as if you have to be your own closer as Barry Lyons takes that foul ball off the right toe, I believe. Pasquale Perez Kind of a flailing swing, and Lyons is the one who pays the price. Oh, I hate when that happens. Pasquale has four hits. He's hitting 182. 
Ground ball into the glove of Dave Magadan. And Pasquale's gone for the second out. But a bad player of the game for the New York Mets receives something new under the sun. The Mets won, and the Expos nothing. Two away in the bottom of the third inning as Doc Gooden goes to work against Dave Martinez at the top of the Expo order. Jim, you mentioned Doc Gooden, all the ingredients that goes into being a, a winning pitcher. You mentioned being on a, on a winning team. It also helps if they score runs for you. Gooden was the most supported pitcher in the National League last season. Mets scored almost six runs a game every time he pitched. That's how you get to 100 wins in a hurry. Support. The Mets were a lot better team in the years that Gooden has been with them than Cleveland was for Bob Feller or Cincinnati was for Noodles Hahn. Two successive curveballs to Dave Martinez who has been swinging a hot bat. It gets around that a hitter is swinging well and that's when you start to see some off speed pitches something that Howard Johnson has adjusted to with the Mets. Mm -hmm. He's continued to swing the bat well by hitting off speed pitches for home runs. Goodness hot tonight. There's strikeout number three one in each inning and Dave Martinez is gone in the third third successive curveball. And this one's in a nasty place down and away. And the Expos are gone in the third. They have one hit in three innings off Doc Gooden. The Mets have three off Pasquale Perez. One a home run after three one nothing Mets. This is Labatt Expos baseball on TSN. This is Jim Houston with Ken Singleton at Olympic Stadium in Montreal inviting you to join us Canada Day the 1st of July at 730 Eastern the Houston Astros visit the Montreal Expos. That's our next telecast on TSN. Let's go to the fourth inning here at Olympic Stadium. The Mets leading one to nothing and the player of the week in the National League Howard Johnson leading off. 11 for 23 478 in the six games he played in the past week to be player of the week were three home runs all of them against the Expos seven runs batted in at three stolen bases there's a great week Ken power and speed and when you start talking about all star third base when we're getting to that time of year could this be your man Howard Johnson <laughs> will he be able to out distance Mike Schmidt in the voting <laughs> Will Schmidt come out of retirement to play the? Oh, no, I don't think so. They'll invite him to the game. Though. Yeah, I, I'm certain they would. Counts one and one. What a changeup! Pasquale has been changing speeds extremely well tonight. Not just with the blooper pitch, but with the straight change like this one. Well, that wasn't the Pasquale ball. You're right. Just the straight change has Johnson well out in front. He still had a pretty good pass at it. Howard's not getting fooled. At least not by as much. Buck Rogers was in a dilemma after the series against New York in New York last week wondering how they should pitch to Howard Johnson. Here's the one two and I guess that's how they should pitch to Howard Johnson. They tried everything on him and couldn't get him out. Pasquale Perez has struck him out here. Strikeout number five. Change of speeds and then Pasquale comes back with his best pitch. The slider. It's sliding tonight. Ooh, that one did. Gooden's packing his best curve ball. Perez is packing his best slider. And a mistake went out of the park and the Mets lead one to nothing. Ground ball by Kevin McReynolds. Spike Owen picks it up. Tough throw, but he makes the play. That's the kind of play Spike Owen has been making day in and day out for the Expos. If Spike Owen gets to the ball, he usually makes the play. Now watch, he, he's running towards right field, but he has to square up right here just for an instant and gets the throw off accurately to first base. Had to throw on the run. Very tough play for Spike Owen. Nothing wrong with his range on that play. Ooh. Two away for Pasquale Perez as he goes up against Greg Jeffries, who struck out in the second. Boy, the pitchers are moving this game right along, as you might have expected. Ground ball, this could be tough. Perez left it for Galarraga. Collision and he's out. Galarraga is hurt. Jeffries is out. And Perez, who was the cause of all the confusion, gives his buddy a hug and thanks him for a great play.
Now Pasquale does get a glove on the ball, but the concentration of Galarraga is something supreme. Quickly, he beats Jeffries to the bag, and then the collision. This could have been very serious. Expo fans should be very happy that Galarraga is not seriously hurt. Let's have another look at this unusual play. It appeared that Pasquale wanted to take it by himself, but he forgot to bring the baseball. That's where Galarraga comes in, and then the collision. Looks like Jeffries took an elbow to the face. There might be a major penalty on that elbow. <laughs> One to nothing. The Mets lead the Expos in the middle of the fourth. This is Labatt Expos baseball on TSN. To the bottom of the fourth at Olympic Stadium in Montreal, Tom Foley will lead off for the Expos, trailing one to nothing. They've been out hit three to one, and Foley's up against Doc Gooden, followed by Galarraga, who bowled over Greg Jeffries. And then Tim Raines. On that last play uh, with Pascal Perez touching the ball, he gets an assist. That play goes one to three, retiring Greg Jeffries. But in yesterday's ball game at Shea State, the Mets played a Nine inning game, they won, and there was not an assist recorded in the whole game. First time ever in National League history. Sid Fernandez on the mound. Every out was either a strikeout or a fly ball. That's amazing. Nobody thrown out at first. Nobody thrown out anywhere. No. Well, ball and a strike to Foley. It's happened in the American League, the Cleveland Indians, back in 1945. It was the first time ever in the National League. I think maybe Bob Feller we've been talking about tonight was in that game. He, he might have been striking everybody out. Tom Foley has struggled as of late. Now two for his last 15 after fouling out to Howard Johnson back in the first inning. Well Doc Gooden is not the guy you want to see in the midst of a slump. Ouch. A little more conventional play around first base. Mag it into Gooden, three to one. And Foley's gone for the first out of the fourth inning. <laughs> Sid Fernandez is a fly ball pitcher. Most of his outs recorded on fly balls, and of course. He can strike people out too, so the combination was there. Yeah. A pitcher that throws hard, gets a lot of fly balls, and strikes people out, and it finally happened. Not a nary a ground ball anywhere in the infield. Well, the play that the Mets just made, which was the first baseman over to Gooden. There was the first assist in this game against Doc Gooden. Gooden's the kind of guy to do that, but but he throws that curveball, and you'd think that there'd be more ground balls and lots of assists in his games. His guys are swinging and topping his curve. Who? Ripped by Galarraga. Off the glove of Howard Johnson. Galarraga rounds first. He's going for second, but he hesitated. He slides in and is safe. He took a stutter step around first, and I thought it might cost him, but it didn't. Galarraga smokes this ball past Howard Johnson, barely gets a glove on it. Now remember, Kevin McReynolds in left field has a pulled rib cage. Now it it might bother his throwing, although he looks a little lackadaisical in going after that ball. And the big cat, even for a big man, he runs very well. Is in with a double. His 13th double of the season. That's a double only because Howard Johnson got a piece of the ball and slowed it down because it was ripped. And had Johnson not touched it, that ball would have been to McReynolds in a lot quicker fashion. So the Expos have a runner in scoring position for the second time. They stranded QB Brooks at second in the second. And Tim Raines, who's hitting over 300 left-handed, is at the plate. More importantly, 383 with runners in scoring position. Mm -hmm. That tops the ball clubs. One of the best in the league.
Galarraga with his lead. Gooden's 1-0 pitch inside. And it's ball 2-2-0. Two, two and oh. It appears that Gooden's really trying to keep the ball inside on Tim Raines. He got him to ground out the first base to leading off the second inning. The Mets defense is set up accordingly. The big gap for Raines is in left center field. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Line drive, base hit to right field. Galarraga is around third. There's a throw towards home. Safe at home is Galarraga. A 1-1 tie at Olympic Stadium. The ability to concentrate with runners on base or in scoring position is the mark of a very good hitter. Tim Raines, one of the best. Now approaching 400 with runners in scoring position. A very weak throw by Mookie Wilson. No chance to get Andres Galarraga at the plate. The 42nd RBI of the season for Tim Raines. He's only three behind the leader on the team, Galarraga. A double and a single for the Expos. Even in hits with the Mets and even on the scoreboard at one apiece. And the Expos are still batting with one away in the bottom of the fourth inning. And Hubie Brooks, who owns Doc Gooden, is at the plate one for one. Reigns with 17 stolen bases. He's been caught six times. Reigns is off and running. A great jump. Lions throw. Not even close. Now Reigns is headed for third. And he'll be there safely as Elster goes after the ball. See the determination on Tim Raines' face. Wasting no time taking off for second base. Putting the pressure on Lions. It was a fastball, but he had a great jump. Remember last year, 56 stolen bases with Dwight Gooden on the mound. Doesn't hold the runners very well. Has a high leg kick. Raines goes to third on the arrow. Stolen base in an error. The Expos threatening to take the lead with Hubie Brooks at the plate and Raines on third. And the Mets bring the infield in, hoping to cut off Reigns at the plate. Base hit for Hubie Brooks. The Expos lead 2-1. to one. Brooks holds up at first. Now he's headed for second, and he's in safely. receives congratulations the Expo fans are on their feet Yubi Brooks good hustling after he gets the base hit over the drawn in infield now remember what I said about McReynolds and his sore ribs stumbles a bit before the throw and it's offline Yubi had hesitated rounding first then decided to go and makes it in the second with a double that is one of the oddest doubles you'll see because he had clearly planned to stop when he rounded first base. And now Steve Garland, the trainer who's had enough to do lately, is out at second base in conversation with Greg Jeffries. Don't Jeffries. forget, Jeffries was elbowed and knocked down by Galarraga. So a double, a single, and a double in succession. And the Expos have a 2-1 lead with Hubie Brooks at second base and one away. And Jeffries is coming out of the ball game. Tim Tuffle, who's off the disabled list, just in the past week, will come into the ball game. Jeffries a little groggy. After taking a paw from the big cat in the mud. Jeffries is out, Tuffle is in, and as you see Tuffle warming up, you should keep in mind, oops, <laughs> that Davey Johnson, if he needs to go to his bench, is in some trouble tonight. He's already had to go to Tuffle. 
Harold Strawberry can't come into the game. So already, just here in the bottom of the fourth inning, Davey Johnson's down to just four men left on his bench. Sasser, Carrion, Miller, and Mazzilli are the only players left available other than pitchers to Davey Johnson. Hubie Brooks is two for two with an RBI, and he's standing out on second base, or just off it now, as Wallach bats against Gooden. Yeah, it was just a few weeks ago that Hubie said that it's time for some runs batted in, and he's been swinging the bat well of late. Driving in runs, his average now over the 250 mark with runners in scoring position. A few weeks ago, he was below 200 in those situations. Doc Gooden cruised through the first three, but ran into a big roadblock here in the fourth inning. Galarraga, Reigns, and Brooks, the middle of the Expos order, have all had hits off the dock. Gooden has been tough on Wallach over the years. Wallach does have a couple of home runs against the doctor. And in fact, I think they both came in the same game. But other than that, it's been tough sledding for Wallach against Gooden. And this is a tough at bat. Two and two, one away. You know, with the two hits that Hubie Brooks has off Doc Gooden tonight. He's now 16 for 41 lifetime. That translates to a 390 average of one of the best pitchers in all of baseball. There's not many people who can say that. Here's a pitcher who's 63 games above 500 for his career. And this guy hits him like he's lobbing up softballs. Nine and four lifetime against the Expos, including two and all this year. But I think we mentioned it last week. Some of the Expo hitters have done pretty well against Doc Gooden. It's just that he's been too tough for the rest of the hitters in the lineup to kind of climax the damage. Well, the Expos have Gooden on the ropes. Will this be the turning point in the game? Stay tuned following our game for the TSN Turning Point brought to you by Converse. For the first time in this game, Doc Gooden has walked a batter. Tim Wallach is now at first. The Expos are at first and second, leading in the game two to one. And there's just one out. And there's a conference on the mound. Seems to me it's not often, Ken, that you get a chance with a great pitcher like Gooden to get him on the ropes and smoke him. Oftentimes he'll bail himself out of situations like this. Here's a Terrific opportunity for the Expos to build a big lead for Pascual Perez. And since Nelson Santavani has come off of the disabled list, he has yet to pick up a run batted in. Struck out with Hubie Brooks at second in the second to end the inning. And now he's up with two aboard. Ball one, one and oh. And as the pitch total rises for Doc Gooden, you can bet Steve Garland, the trainer, and Davey Johnson are watching with interest, along with Mel Stottlemyre and the rest of the Mets, to see if Doc Gooden's shoulder is stiffening up, if he's having problems. He should have started two days ago. They gave him extra time. Maybe two points in thinking there, giving him extra time. Uh for that shoulder, but maybe they wanted to start him against the Expos. Mm -hmm. They certainly didn't look like he had any arm troubles last Monday night when he beat the Expos. Well, maybe they were thinking, what a, well, maybe you can give his arm a rest at the same time it's the Phillies on the weekend, so two birds with one stone. But any time a pitcher, Doc Gooden or Roger Clemens or Pitchers like that start to complaining about arm trouble. You better listen. One and one to Santavania. Now a ball and two strikes. 
That appeared to be some somewhat of an off-speed pitch, maybe a changeup. Wasn't in a good location, but it fooled Sanavania so much he couldn't even make a pass at it. Brooks and Wallach aboard, the one-two pitch. Foul ball, that's 22 pitches now in this inning alone. For Doc Gooden, one-two count remains on Santavania. Santavania with a sweeping tight swing. Or can handle the low fastball pretty well. It's that high fastball that gives him trouble. He's not the only one against this guy. One-two pitch, and he struck him out. Strikeout number four for Gooden. Just as I mentioned, the high fastball. Here it comes. Up and in. Good location. Maybe even a ball. Santa Ben, you can't get to it. Down two to one. Gooden has the Expos down to their last out of this inning, but still there are runners at first and second with two away. And the batter is Spike Owen. Pretty good power pitchers holding those numbers, leading the league in strikeouts. Jose De Leon on top with 100. Fly ball right field. It's gone. A home run for Spike Owen. home run of the season for Owen and the Expos lead 5-1. to one. The most unlikely of home run hitters for both ball clubs tonight, the shortstop, Kevin Elster, and then Spike Owen. Spike, more damage with a three-run shot, his first home run since May the 3rd against Juan Augusto of Houston here at the Big O. <laughs> to try and imitate that handshake so who would have thought if you come out here tonight you have Doc Gooden against Pasquale Perez would you have thought that Kevin Elster and Spike Owen would hit home runs tonight not a chance oh no way would you have thought that Dwight Gooden would be trailing 5-1 to one in the fourth inning Trying to get Pasquale Perez for the last out. The eighth man up for the Montreal Expos against Gooden in the fourth. 0-2 oh count. Perez waved at it and got a piece of the pitch. David West, who hasn't pitched very much, a left-hander warming in the Mets bullpen. West has only pitched seven and a third innings this season. Ball and two strikes high and outside to Perez. Ball gets away out towards left field. David West threw one a little east. And time is called. Pascal Perez is hanging in against Doc Gooden, and uh, uh, that's about all. That's a ball and two strikes. Over 30 pitches in the inning for Gooden. He's got a tender shoulder, four hits, five runs, ground ball. Tim Tuffle, the second baseman, is up with it and throws out Pascal Perez, and the fourth is finally over, and the Expos get a big cheer from their fans. Doc Gooden has been roughed up. The Expos got four hits, two doubles, one of them a three-run home run. 
for Spike Owen, and the Montreal Expos have a 5-1 to one lead after four. This is Labatt Expos Baseball on TSN. Hi, I'm Spike Owen of the Montreal Expos. Come out and watch the Expos take on the Astros Saturday, July the 1st at 7.30 p.m. here on TSN. Remember what happened last time. There could be some fireworks. Y'all come on out. Well, there were some fireworks tonight for Spike Owen. Jumps all over a high fastball. Looked like it was up and in. Spike falling away. And he got good wood on it and ran it just over the wall. The Astros and the Expos on Saturday night and what Spike was referring to is the last time the Astros and Expos met. Larry Anderson threw one up and in right under the nose of Spike Owen and Spike headed for the mound. And there was a bench clearing brawl. Some bad blood. Danny Darwin in particular. <laughs> Everybody was chasing Danny Darwin. Danny had hit a number of Expo players over the years and they didn't particularly appreciate it. So when a fight breaks out, that's who they usually look for. At least the hitters do. Pasquale Perez has been sitting for a while and now he goes to work against Mookie Wilson. Perfect time to have Mookie coming up. He's a perfect sort of leadoff hitter. But he hits a fly ball that sends Reigns back to the track. Actually, Otis Nixon is out there now and has made the catch. Now, remember when Reigns stole second base, the throw from Barry Lyons hit Reigns in the knee. Now, if that's the case, we can have it checked on and see uh, what has happened to Tim Reigns. And if he's out of the game, I'm sure he's having that knee iced down. But Otis Nixon now takes over in left field. With a 5-1 to one lead, an opportunity to rest Reigns if indeed he's hurt. So Nixon in left. And Buck Rogers has had to go to the bench because of an injury. And so has Davey Johnson. Martinez stays in center. Davey Johnson with Jeffries out of the game in favor of Tuffle. Now Otis is so fast, he snuck into the ball game and nobody knew it. The PA announcer just announced Nixon in the game. Maybe even the umpire didn't notice he was out there. Bob Davidson said, you got to tell me. Or does it have to do with Pasquale Perez? Is there going to be another inspection? Well, if there is, Pasquale Perez certainly is not standing at attention. Davey Johnson looks on with interest. Are they getting a new glove? There's something on Pasquale Perez's glove that they were looking at. Now remember, this has worked for other teams in the National League. It worked for the Chicago Cubs. Upsetting Pasquale's concentration. Cubs came back and scored a couple of runs. Something to do with his glove. They're not going to allow him to use it. Now it could be the strings on it. See the strings? The strings hanging off the glove. The Mets feel are distracting their hitters. Well, that's probably not the case at all, but that's what they're pointing out, hoping to rattle Pasquale Perez. They were pointing to the little patch. Now, are they going to do some repair work on this? It appears so, and the manager is taking things into his own hands, hoping to help out his pitcher. I think he's just using a felt pen. And he's going to blot out that circular white mark. It looked like they a Batman logo. Appropriately. <laughs> now will this little ploy work? Down 5-1. The fans boo, but who can blame Davey Johnson for trying anything? Buck Rogers saves the day with his bat pencil. You know, Pasquale has, has had an interesting way of answering uh, his opponents. He's not afraid to come up and in. He did it with Mike Sosha of the Dodgers, and that started a brawl. I wonder who noticed that. Who was the last strikeout big? Howard Johnson? <laughs> yes, he may be a candidate. 
And a big cheer for the strike to Barry Lyons, 0-2. Was it Hojo? We're trying to get the mojo working on Pasquale. <laughs> and he says no go. Look at this. What an interesting yeah. night. Doc Gooden's in trouble. Pasquale is steamed. One two pitch. Missed with a slider two and two. In the past when Pasquale has been questioned about foreign substances which wasn't the case here. It's been about his fastball as you pointed out and he's been then been reluctant to throw the fastball to hitters immediately after being questioned he goes with his slider and all he has to do is hang one and he's in trouble and that's what's happened to him so teams have seen him get in trouble immediately after being questioned and now they decide to do it too but I wonder how long this goes on I suppose until he doesn't get in any trouble after being questioned if Pasquale, stop. if Pasquale picks up a strike out here, I, you might get one of the best reaction shots of the season. <laughs> the 2-2 pitch. Ground ball. Foley is up with it. Over to Galarraga. And Barry Lyons has gone two away. Tom Foley, who has played... 25 or more games at short and second in each of the last three seasons. The only player in the major leagues to do that. But this year that streak is in jeopardy largely because of Spike Owen as the everyday shortstop. The Expos lead five to one. Top of the fifth inning at the Big O in Montreal. A five run fourth inning and the Expos have had big innings of late. Did it on the weekend in Chicago. They had one five run inning. The big inning and good pitching has carried them to three straight wins into this game. Their longest winning streak of the season is just four. Their best stretch was winning 10 of 13 against San Francisco, San Diego, L.A., and Philadelphia on a road trip. Here's a pop-up. Spike Owen makes the catch. And with the shiny white dot on his glove, Blocked out by Pasquale. Blocked out whatever the Mets were trying to do to him. And leads 5-1 in the middle of the fifth from the big O. This is Levat Expos Baseball on TSN. Next Blue Jays action as they continue to roll and try and catch the Orioles is tomorrow night. The Blue Jays and the Orioles on TSN. Join Fergie Oliver and Buck Martinez for all the action at 7.30 Eastern Time. The New York Mets trailing 5-1, to one, already riddled with injuries, may have more problems. You know there's something wrong with Doc Gooden when he's out of a game after four innings, even though he's given up five hits and five runs. Rookie David West is on for Doc Gooden. This pitching change is brought to you by Absorbing Junior, Canada's number one selling liniment. 24-year-old David West in relief of Doc Gooden. West 6'6", 220 pounds out of Memphis, Tennessee. New battery altogether with David West in the game and Mackie Sasser now behind the plate, so Barry Lyons is out of the game. And Davey Johnson's bench is now down to Mark Carrion, Keith Miller, and Lee Mazzilli. That's it. A lot of trade talks concerning the pitcher on the mound, David West. The Mets were reluctant to part with him, and, and with good reason. This young man had some outstanding years in the minor leagues. 12-4 and four last season at Tidewater and AAA. 143 strikeouts in 160 innings. 1987 at Jackson at AA. West was 10 and 7 with 186 strikeouts and 166 innings. So he's got good stuff.
and picks up his first strikeout on a fastball to Dave Martinez. Dave Martinez doesn't face too many lefties. Usually that's up to Otis Nixon, but this is a fastball right over the outside corner, right into Mackie Sasser's glove. West, a former fourth round pick for the Mets in the 1983 draft. West now pitching to Tom Foley, lefty against lefty, high fly ball to right, and Mookie Wilson is back and has a long wait before that comes down. But the ball is caught, Foley's gone two away. Gooden's outing tonight. David West has come on, was four innings long. It's the shortest Dwight Gooden outing since September 26, 1987. So well over a year and a half. Gave up five runs on five hits, struck out four, and walked one. And if you've got a scorecard going along with us, Mackie Sasser comes into the game on the double switch because Gooden's spot was due up to lead off in the top of the sixth inning. So Sasser will lead off, and West, the pitcher's spot, goes into the number seven spot in the order where Barry Lyons was. Andres Galarraga has doubled and struck out. Big Cat with a good hustle on the double the left field. Smash off the glove of Howard Johnson. Johnson was playing about as deep as he is now. And I'll tell you just how hard Galarraga hit that ball. And in batting practice, the Big Cat was lining shots out of here in no time. Right off the bat and into the blue seats down the left field line. Fouled away, two and two. Cincinnati Reds, amidst all of that turmoil, continue to win some ball games. A 5-3 win tonight. Pittsburgh and Chicago playing. The Cubs have lost three in a row to the Expos, now trailing 2-0 to Pittsburgh. That's in the fifth inning. And it's Doug Drabick against Greg Maddox. No home runs in the game. Two runs for Pittsburgh in the top of the first inning. count is full to Andres Galarraga from David West. And Galarraga's aboard. Second walk issued by Met Pitchers. The first by David West. A West, a hard throw. Here's how you get scouts' attention in high school. Now you start with his size. West at 6'6", 220. He graduated from Craigmont High School in Memphis, Tennessee, where he struck out 109 batters in 52 innings. <laughs> Had an ERA of 0 0.56. So that's how you get scouts' attention. No kidding. At a young age. One of the most talked about young pitchers in baseball when it comes to trade talks these days. One-0 pitch to Otis Nixon, who's now into the ball game for Tim Raines. Another high fly ball to left. McReynolds is back at the track. And he made the catch to retire the side. Otis Nixon flies out. So David West in his first inning of work didn't give up a hit. He walked Galarraga but stranded him aboard. The Mets have some work to do with the plate though against Pascual Perez in this ball game from Olympic Stadium. The score is Montreal five and the New York Mets one after five. This is Labatt Expo. The New York Mets and the Montreal Expos, the first of three from Olympic Stadium. You're watching it on TSN. I'm Jim Houston with Ken Singleton, and the Expos have a 5-1 lead thanks to a five-run fourth inning. Sasser, Samuel, and Magadan up to face Pasquale Perez, who's given up three hits through his first five innings of work. One of the hits, a home run, a solo shot to Kevin Elster. Here's the left-handed batting catcher, Mackie Sasser. First pitch 
A ground ball to Wallach, and Sasser's thrown out. So Mackey's back on the bench. <laughs> Sasser's been sharing the catching duties with Barry Lyons in the absence of Gary Carter. Sasser's swinging a good bat. Five for his last 11, now five for his last 12. Juan Samuel swinging away. Hubie Brooks charges on in right field and makes the catch. Two pitches, two outs for Pascual Perez in the Mets half of the sixth inning. Sasser and Samuel are gone, and now it's time for Pasquale to face Dave Magadan, and Pasquale is really in a groove. Pasquale with a friendly pat for his countrymen as he ran by the mound. He kind of give uh, Juan Samuel a pat on the back. Maybe it's for that 0 for 3. Two strikeouts and a fly out to right field. Dave Magadan doubled and was stranded in the first and grounded out in the third. And he's behind 0-1. This is Pasquale's first start against the Mets this year. He did pitch against them in relief. Last year he was 2-2 two two in four starts against New York. And he's under 500, three and six lifetime against the Mets. Hoping to make it four and six tonight as he works on Dave Magadan and he throws the slow, slow change for the third time. You know, a pitch like this, a hitter might be able to read the nationally credited president's name, William D. White, as it goes by. And that's the second time he's been able to throw that pitch for a strike. That's sort of a bonus. A called strike. Sanavania thought that was a strike. But it's ball one, one and two. We have a report on Tim Raines, by the way. He has a stretched right quadricep and is day to day. Greg Jeffries is out with dizzy spells after that collision with Galarraga at first, and who can blame him? Even the smelling salts didn't work, and he's out for this game at least. And no word on Gooden. Perhaps he's out of the game as a precaution with the score five to one. He was shelled in an inning. He's had shoulder problems. He too may have dizzy spells after what happened in the fourth. You mentioned the Mets not taking any chances, trailing four runs in the ball game. They can give Gooden even more rest. Perez scampers off to the dugout after striking out Dave Magadan. A 1-2-3 inning for Pasquale in the sixth. Think he's excited? <laughs> Since the home run in the third, he's retired 12 straight and has a 5-1 lead. This is Labatt Expos Baseball on TSN. There have been two home runs in this ball game tonight. It that's been a rarity around the National League with the Expos involved. 87 was the year of the home run. And to this date in 87, the Expos had hit 55. Last year, of course, they said the balls weren't as lively, 46. And this year, the Expos have hit only 41. How about the Mets in the year of the home run? Look how many they'd hit at this time. Down last year, and they're up a bit this year, but about the same as last year. And for the league overall, wow. Home runs are way down. So was it that lively rabbit ball of 87? Is it so much better pitching last year and this year? And what about the new balls, the William Whites? Will they be more lively? I don't think pitching can improve that much over a two-year period. I, maybe somewhat, but I really have to believe the balls are different. Yubi Brooks can't tell him the balls are any softer after this shot off of the ankle. Ouch. Woo. Yubi's telling uh, Tim Wallace, the balls are as hard as ever. 
<laughs> William White hurts as much as the A. Bartlett Giamatti, Tim. Hubie's a sad guy that Doc Gooden's out of the game. Upped his average to 390 off Gooden, was two for two tonight with a run scored in an RBI, and now he's got to work against David West. The good news is, though, that West is a lefty, and Hubie Brooks has lit up lefties for his career. Hubie's hitting eight out of his last ten, make that nine out of his last 11 ball games. He's driven in 12 runs. Hubie so Brooks' bat is coming alive in the middle of the order. Two-two pitch to Brooks, and he lines a shot into the stands. You know there may have been more to that double switch that Davy Johnson made, putting Mackie Sasser into the ball game. Remember, a foul tip earlier went off the toe. Barry Lyons. Well, he's hurting too as he sits in the dugout. So the Mets, already decimated by injuries, have picked up a couple more tonight. Here's the 2-2 pitch from West. Three and two, the count is full. You know, recently, when the Cubs were in town, I was talking to Chicago broadcaster Steve Stone, and he, he made a point, which was a very valid one, that injuries really play a big part in a pennant race. Fly ball, the right field, Mookie Wilson back to the track and hauls it in for the out. As I was saying about Steve Stone. Yes. A valid point I heard it was. A valid point about injuries. And he said that the the Pirates more or less early in the year had their season gone awry in that series against the Expos when yeah. the, they had Andy Van Slyke injured and out, Sid Bream and Mike Lavalier all injured in the same series against the Expos. The Mets have had some injury problems. The St. Louis Cardinals pitchers Danny Cox, Greg Matthews out for the season right at the start. The Mets have had some injury problems, but the Expos have been more or less injury free this season. Ground ball for the shortstop Elster, a long throw, but Wallach has gone two away. So, so the pessimist in this case might say, why then are the Expos not runaway leaders in this division over the Mets and the Cardinals? Well, they've had some pretty good players to fill in and do the job. Now, the Expos, on the other hand, are just kind of starting to hit their stride. The pitching wasn't going very well at the beginning of the year. Right now, the pitching staff is on a roll. And finally, on the weekend, the hitters and the pitchers got it going on the same weekend in the same series, and they won three in a row. It's probably frustrating, though, for some fans when you've looked at this team and thought, what an opportunity, a great opportunity for the Expos to get a big lead with the Mets struggling, the Pirates struggling, the Cardinals hurt. But they haven't been able to put together the huge streak. Nelson Santavania, who spent some time in the disabled list for the Expos, gets his first hit of the night after striking out twice against Gooden. That's the first hit off David West. I guess of all the Expo injuries, I guess the only one that's been significant has been the one to Santa Fe, who yeah. kept him out for about a month. The Cubs lose somebody like Andre Dawson for a period of time. They were able to hang in, weren't they? They kept playing well. In fact, their whole starting outfield, Jerome Walton was out for a portion of time. Mitch Webster out. But then the Cubs called up Lloyd McClendon, Dwight Smith, and they filled in admirably. So that's what I mean. Remember when Buck Rogers had that meeting in spring training with about 32 players that but only 24 of them would make the team? He mentioned that you are the guys that are going to be the Montreal Expos. When people get hurt, you are the guys that are going to be called up. Somebody like a Marty Peavy. So that's what it's going to take. More than just the 24 that started the season for a team to win a division title. The other clubs have been through it a bit more than the Expos have. 
Ball in a strike, two away. Spike Owen, the batter, hit the three-run home run in the fourth. The Expos are up five to one, and Owen has another hit. This one didn't go as far as the last one. But a base hit nonetheless, the second tonight for Spike Owen, who with the home run snapped an 0 for 8 spell, and now is 2 for 3. First and second with two away for the Expos. Spike Owen, a hitter of consequence tonight, batting in that eighth slot in front of the pitcher. Now West will face Pasquale Perez. Some more action in the New York Mets bullpen. Jeff Innes was called up from the minors last week, loosening up for Davey Johnson. Pasquale Perez leads all Expos pitchers and runs batted in with three. Expos has seven RBIs from their pitchers this season. Tried to bunt and fouled it back. It's tough to get an RBI on a bunt with a man on second. It's going to be have, have to be a good one. <laughs> yeah. The strikeout for David West gets him out of trouble in the sixth. The Expos got a couple of hits, but left runners at first and second. And Pasquale Perez will change hats. Get back out on the mound and go to work with a 5-1 lead after six. This is Labatt Expos Baseball on TSN. The batting leaders in the National League. Look at the averages all the way down to 289. We'll get you into the elite position amongst the hitters in the National League. And you notice there aren't many over 300. Six in the National League. The National League batting average is 245, three points below where it finished last year at 248. The American League traditionally has a higher batting average because of the DH. DH a factor certainly. Some very hot hitters. Ruben Sierra having a fantastic year for Texas. As you can see, there's only one DH on that list, full-time DH. And that's Harold Baines of the Chicago White Sox. Everybody else is uh, more or less a position player. But one thing those players do get, there is the luxury of DHing occasionally the, to get a semi-day off. Sure. Carney Lansford is DH occasionally for the Oakland A's. It's an interesting point because you think about the little nicks that players get. Like Reigns tonight has pulled a muscle. Uh, Daryl Strawberry has a bad toe. His is too bad, actually, even to bat. But in the American League, you might be able to rest and not have to stretch out a pulled muscle in the outfield, but still swing the bat. Well, one thing that happens when you leave the lineup, you get a little rusty, especially if you miss it about a week's time. It's, I guess, the best example of the antithesis of that is Dan Ford. My former teammate. Disco Dan. Disco Danny Ford. Missed a month and a half with knee surgery. His very first game back, he hit three home runs. I, I, I thought it's just. It <laughs> can't be done. No, it's just, it's not that easy. It's been pretty easy for Howard Johnson of late as well. The National League Player of the Week into this game. 0 for 2 tonight, though, against Pasquale Perez. He and the Mets have had a tough time. Three hits, none since the third inning. Tried the Pasquale pitch for the fourth time tonight. It worked the first three times, but Howard Johnson would have none of it this time. And after retiring 12 in a row, Pasquale has given up a base hit to Howard Johnson. Got a semi-smile on Howard's face. He's a great fastball hitter. Now he's a great Pasquale ball hitter. Should put an asterisk beside that base hit. Kevin McReynolds came into this game on a six game hitting streak, but he's 0 for 2 tonight. He's flied out and grounded out. 
Expos 5 and the New York Mets 1. Top of the seventh inning from Olympic Stadium in Montreal. The first of three between these teams this week. Tomorrow it's David Cohn against Bryn Smith and then Wednesday Bob Ojeda against Mark Langston in a battle of hot lefties. Ojeda's had a couple of great starts recently. Langston's coming off a win in Chicago but he hasn't pitched particularly well at Olympic Stadium. You had to feel that this game tonight was a key from the Montreal Expo standpoint. If they can hold on and beat a Doc Gooden that's certainly a plus. And you're going against two pitchers in the next two nights who although they've had great success in the past are both currently under 500. Cones at four and five Ojeda's at five and six. Although Ojeda's earned run average is right around three so he's been tough but perhaps has lacked support. Nobody out runner on first Pasquale Perez working to Kevin McReynolds. And the count is two and one. Inside ball three, three and one. I mentioned, mentioned lefties on Wednesday. There's another great lefty that's coming back tomorrow. John Tudor. Scheduled to return to the Los Angeles Dodgers tomorrow. But the way they've been hitting, they might want him to go to the plate. They don't need any more pitching. It's been great. They just can't hit the ball. In order to get Tudor back in the rotation, the Dodgers are going to have to put Tim Belcher in the bullpen. Howard Johnson is running. Lined foul and caught in the bullpen. Yeah, it works. Good reason for wearing that mask, too. Yeah. Full count, three and two on McReynolds. A crowd of 27,295 at Olympic Stadium on a Monday night. It's a holiday for many people in Quebec. Howard Johnson's running again. McReynolds hits the ball. Hojo stays out of the double play by running, but McReynolds is out at first. One away, and Howard Johnson is safe at second. Variety of, of offense from Howard Johnson, a great power hitter with the 19 home runs, but he also has the speed. Stole over 30 bases a couple of years ago, and this time on the move, keeps the Mets out of the double play. One away, runner in scoring position at second, and the batter is Tim Tuffle. Tuffle came on for Greg Jeffries. I was going to say Tuffle hasn't had a chance to play against left right handers that often. Coming off the sable list with a sprained ankle, he injured that ankle while jogging through the streets of Chicago. That'll teach him. I've heard of mean streets, but <laughs> <laughs> one of them jumped up and bit him. Ball and a strike. Tuffle swings and misses. Strike two, one and two. One away top of the seventh inning. Jim, you mentioned that the Expo's longest winning streak of the season is four games. If they win tonight, they would equal that. Right. And tomorrow night with Bryn Smith pitching, they would have their first opportunity all year to go through the rotation with victories. Well, they've got the rotation to do it now. You know, when you compare the Expos and the Mets, you look at, first of all, their starting pitching. And you have to say right now that the Expos hold the edge without a doubt with Perez and Smith and Gross and Martinez and Langston in the bullpen I think you'd have to give the edge to the Mets but barely I think that Tim Burke Tim Burke 
has had an all-star type yeah. first half. There's no doubt he should be on the all-star team. Okay, so he saws off Randy Myers, but Aguilera has been better than Andy McGaffigan. You got that. Your two main guys, and maybe the setup men have been a little better, although there's some expo pitchers that they just haven't used. Strikeout number seven for Pasquale Perez. The slider's his best pitch, and this one paints the outside corner. Yeah, he's down. He likes that. Two away, and Howard Johnson's still out on second. So how about defensively? The Mets have made more errors than the Expos this season. In fact, the Mets rank 10th in the league defensively. The Expos 6th. I think defensively the Expos take the edge not just because they've made fewer errors speed of foot in the outfield in particular yeah you know Juan Samuel more or less learning a very important position in center there's a rookie at second base for the Mets fly ball to right field and it's foul by about a foot Mookie Wilson now 0-2 as he heads back to the plate and then of course you've got Wallach and Galarraga on the corners and steadier than Howard Johnson and Dave Magadan and offensively so far this season the Mets have struggled the Expos have been sporadic at full tilt who would you give the edge to Two different type ball clubs when it comes to the way they score runs. The Mets are a home run powered team. The Expos are a double stolen base team, although the Mets can steal bases too with Howard Johnson and Strawberry, two of their power hitters, able to steal 30 bases apiece. This is going to be a tough play. Short hop by Foley, and he made a beauty. Talk about your defense. Yes, give the edge to the Expos defensively. A fine play by Tom Foley, stranding a runner aboard in the seventh. Now remember, Mookie Wilson gets down the line very well, one of the fastest of the Mets. Tom Foley, great concentration, picks it on the short hop and then throws accurately to first. No runs, a hit, no errors, and a man left. Some thanks from Pasquale Perez to Tom Foley. Time for the seventh inning stretch with the Expos leading 5-1. to one. This is Labatt Expos Baseball on TSN. Here in the Montreal area, it's likely to be hot this weekend if it stays the way it is now and you'll want to come to Cougar Bag Day. The Expos and the Astros on Sunday the 2nd of July, 1 o'clock Eastern. First 20,000 fans to attend the game receive an Expos a South Pacific the Cooler Bag. Come on out and see the Expos in a red-hot Eastern Division race and pick up a Cooler Bag. Trainer Steve Garland fixing up somebody's padding. It's the top of the order and Dave Martinez leading off for the Expos in the bottom of the seventh inning. The Expos lead this game five to one. They have a chance to be in first place all alone tonight. Win for the Expos, a loss by the Chicago Cubs. The last report, they were trailing Pittsburgh. One and one. Shallow left, and Kevin McReynolds gets the beat on it, makes the catch, and there's one away. So, Ken, we were talking about how these teams compare offensively, and you were being very diplomatic in your answer and hadn't decided which one was better. Different kinds of offensive teams. I've always preferred the home run, to be honest with you, but it seems you can score quickly, more quickly with a homer. You have to get a sequence of things happening, but the Expos have been up there and run scoring all year long. The Mets, who have led the league in the last three seasons in run scored, are not doing that this year. So in a year where the home runs are down throughout baseball, it this will be kind of baseball will might pay off. Yeah.
Base hit for Tom Foley. He's off for two. There's the throw. Sliding hit first with a double is Tom Foley. The Expos' third double of the night. So Tom Foley, who showed you Expos' defense, now shows you Expos' speed on the bases. Buck Rogers' team ability to turn singles into doubles. Foley did not hesitate. Rounding first, Tess Mookie Wilson's arm, and he's in safely. So that offense you talked about gives the Expos yet another double. The 134th of the season that leads the league for Montreal. For Foley, that's his 11th double of the season. Galarago hit a double and scored in the fourth is at the plate. And the count is 0-1. Galarraga wishes he had that pitch back. He had the big cat swing at it. Made the far away pass at that pitch, but fouled it off. This is the third inning of work for David West, and very likely his last. He is due up as the leadoff man, but then there's nobody working in the bullpen, although Jeff Innes was warmed and standing around as though he was ready. So certainly not definite, but may be the last inning of work for West. Ooh. Not to go to the bench for David West in the top of the eighth inning would be like conceding to Davey Johnson, wouldn't it? Unless this guy possesses some batting prowess that we don't know about. It's very unlikely. Jeff Ennis, looks like he's ready to go. 0-2 to Galarraga is fouled back. So the Expos scored five runs in the fourth inning on four hits. Two doubles, a single, and a three-run home run for Spike Owen. The former American leaguer goes to the American League offense and gives the Expos a 5-1 lead. Fouled away again by Galarraga. Chicago has finally scored a run. That was their first run in 20 innings. They've been shut down by the Montreal Expos. The scheduled starters in that ball game, Doug Drabeck for the Pittsburgh Pirates against Greg Maddox. And according to our information, they're still in the game. As one would expect in a 2-1 tilt. 1-2 and two to Galarraga, who's having quite an at-bat against David West. West on for Doc Gooden, who worked only four innings tonight. And for three, he looked superb. Funny, isn't it, how... For three innings, Gooden looked as powerful as he's ever been. The curveball was breaking sharply. Fastball was fast. They were able to touch him only for a single in the second until the fireworks in the fourth. Galarraga finally wins the at-bat with a single to left. McReynolds throw to home plate. Out at the plate is Tom Foley to score from second base in the single and McReynolds made a fine throw for a man with sore ribs. Galarraga hit the pitch very hard into left field. And that gave McReynolds time. Now remember he led the league last year in assists for an outfielder with 18 and he puts this one right on the money. Not even thinking about the cutoff man. One hop to Sasser. Although he takes the brunt of the blow, he holds on to the ball. Blocked the plate, made the tag. McReynolds throws out Foley for the second out of the seventh. Galarraga advanced to second base on the throw. And Otis Nixon is the batter.
Now you mentioned Doc Gooden being impressive for three innings and then having the gymnasium roof fall in in the fourth. Now when you have problems in the shoulder as he has had, tightness, you see Jeff Ennis warming up in the bullpen. There isn't much pain according to the Mets, but what happens is you start losing power over a period of time. You can get it up there pretty good for a while, but then all of a sudden you start losing a few miles per hour. Fly ball to right field. Mookie Wilson makes the catch. Otis Nixon is retired, and so are the Expos in the seventh. A pair of hits off David West, but they weren't able to score a run thanks to Kevin McReynolds, who threw Tom Foley out trying to score on the single by Galarraga. Galarraga was stranded at second base. The Expos lead by four after seven. This is Labatt Expos baseball on TSN. The Mets staked Dwight Gooden to an early lead in this ball game. It was one to nothing in the third inning after this home run for light hitting shortstop Kevin Elster. Just his second of the season, he came into the game carrying an average of just 2.06 but he hit that ball out like a slugger and it was one to nothing. Pasquale Perez on the mound got defensive help. Now how about this crazy play in the fourth inning? Greg Jeffries hit the ball. The ball hit Pasquale's glove. Galarraga took it, then hit Jeffries. And Jeffries has left the game with dizzy spells. A little wonder. Uh, Doc Gooden may feel a little dizzy after the fourth in which he gave up four hits and five runs the big blow came from a little man. Spike Owen, the shortstop for the Montreal Expos, hit a three-run home run to cap a five-run fourth inning. The Expos had a 5-1 lead, chased Doc Gooden, and Pasquale Perez goes to work against the Mets in the eighth inning with a four-run cushion, and he's been in control. Pinch inning for the Mets, Lee Mazzilli leading off the eighth. Pitch hitting for David West. Mazzilli's been the number one man off the bench for the Mets the last couple of seasons. 17 pinch hit appearances, or at bats this season, I should say. And he has four hits, including a home run and four runs batted in in a pinch hitting role. He is to the Mets what Wallace Johnson is to the Montreal Expos, one of the finest pinch hitters in baseball. Both are switch hitters. So it's like having two pinch hitters in one for both Buck Rogers and Davey Johnson. Pasquale with some snap and a fastball outside two and two. His big pitches tonight have been the changeup and the slider. It's interesting to note that Pasquale while the Expos were in New York, you can recall the White Sox were also in New York. Pasquale picks up his eighth strikeout. And the White Sox were staying at the same hotel as the Expos, so Pasquale had a chance to talk it over with his brother Melito, who had been having some problems. They talked about pitching to 3 o'clock in the morning. Older brother Pasquale gave some good advice. Gave some good advice to his younger brother. And Melito went out and won his next start. And Pasquale hasn't started since the conversation, and he's in this ball game looking for a win tonight. Eight strikeouts for Pasquale as he works against Kevin Elster. Ground ball, Wallach charges it, bare hands it, and throws, no, he didn't get him. Close play at first. And it looked like Wallach had him as Galarraga stretched right out, but Elster is safe. Wallach playing even with the bag, Elster runs very well. Only one chance at the play bare handing and the throw across the body. And I'll tell you what, he looked kind of out to me. Bang, bang. Close at first base. 
It appeared that Elster was still in the air when the ball was in Galarraga's glove. So here we are uh, with another conversation and a meeting on the mound. But this has to do with Pasquale and Buck Rogers thinks he may have hurt himself and wants him to throw a couple of pitches. This will not count as a timeout to the mound for Buck Rogers. As he informed home plate umpire Bob Davidson, he was checking on the physical abilities of his pitcher to continue in the game. Let's check out Kevin Elster. Does he beat the throw? Wallach with a nice play and a very accurate throw to first base. I still say he was out. <laughs> Oh, I thought he was too. Tim Wallach has made plays like that day after day after day, yet he's still made 13 errors this season. Off the glove of Pasquale Perez. Spike Owen gets it, throws it to first, and there's an out. Mackie Sasser is out at first as Elster advanced to second. And yet another defensive play off the glove of the pitcher, Perez. Pasquale will pick up another assist. Now, maybe if he let this ball go back through the middle, the Expos would have had a shot at a double play. But he tips it in the air. Spike Owen on the fly. Like intercepting a pass over the middle. So that play goes 1-6-3. For the out on Sasser. Elster's at second base. And the batter is Juan Samuel, who's 0 for 3. Up here with two away. 5-1 Expos, eighth inning. Trying to move into first place all alone. Up and in to Samuel. Now you saw when Wallach made that play from third base over to first, you saw Pasquale almost lying on the mound. Now he may have been down anyway, so he didn't get hit with the throw, but he also may have slipped, and that's why Buck Rogers was out having him throw a couple of pitches. But he appears to be all right, and he's certainly still in the game. Wallach, who's made 13 errors, is sort of confused about that and frustrated. Says, I feel like I'm playing at third base as well as I ever have in my career, yet I could make 30 errors this season. I'm on pace for that, he's at 13 now. And I wonder if some of the errors are charged against Wallach because he's so good now. He gets errors that would be hits. He wanted to play that down. He didn't feel as though he'd been robbed an awful lot, but thought there might have been a couple where he's charged with an error because scorers expect him to make the superb play now, and on occasion when he doesn't, he's charged with an error on a ball that might be a hit. And he also gets to more balls than a lot of third basemen. So by almost getting to it and making the play and causing the error, his error total goes up, while another third baseman might not get to it at all, and it's a base hit, no error charge. Pasquale Perez was checked by manager Buck Rogers after this particular play, the one where Elster got the infield single. Watch Pasquale. He slips. Might have caught a spike on the mound. And that was the case for concern by manager Buck Rogers. Line drive into the glove of Spike Owen. And that's all in the eighth for the New York Mets. They got a hit. A questionable one at that. An infield single for Kevin Elster. But it didn't cause any problems for Pasquale Perez as he managed to get Sasser and then Samuel to line out. So the Expos go to bat in the bottom of the eighth inning. Pasquale Perez is pitching superbly and they have a 5-1 lead Doc Gooden is gone and first place at least for tonight is in sight the third pitcher of the night for the New York Mets is Jeff Innes Doc Gooden started and went four David West gave Davey Johnson three and now here's the right-hander Innes this pitching change is brought to you by Duracell the one that lasts Jeff Innes' contract was purchased from Tidewater on June 18th. 
following the trade of Len Dykstra and Roger McDowell of Philadelphia. He appeared in 25 games for the Tidewater Tides. All of them in relief and had a 3 and 1 record with 10 saves. He was second in the International League in saves when he was called up. Now watch this interesting delivery. Ground ball and a long throw for Howard Johnson and he's out. A close play at first and Hubie Brooks is thrown out by Howard Johnson. Early in the season Howard Johnson would have no chance of making this play. Remember how he struggled in spring training just to get the ball across the infield. Numerous errors early in the season that shoulder is getting stronger. Post play and Hubie was out. One away for Jeff Innes. Tim Wallach's the batter. 0-1. There you got a good look at the delivery of Jeff Innes, kind of a side wielder. It's good sinking action on that fastball. When he's got his game going, he's getting a lot of ground balls. Slider. Reminds you a bit of Tecolby or Quisenberry, but not quite as pronounced the way he bounces after throwing. And it's not all the way down. It's not a complete submarine. But still, he can be tough on right-handed hitters, just as Quisenberry and DeColby have been over the years. Greg Bonin with the call at first base. No swing for Tim Wallace. He's still alive. Ball and two strikes. Expos five and the Mets one in the first of a three-game series. A pop-up to right center. Mookie Wilson waves off Juan Samuel, makes the catch for the second out. So all of the damage for the Expos tonight came in the fourth inning. Five runs on four hits. Tim Wallach walked and scored on the three-run home run in that inning by Spike Owen. Tomorrow again, it's David Cohn and Bryn Smith in the finale of this series. It'll be Langston and Ojeda, the left-handers, as Nelson Sandovania comes up, having singled in his last at-bat in the sixth. The Expos then move back into the West Division. So when they finish with the Mets, they will have played 25 straight games against teams in the East. Entering the game tonight, they were 13-9 and in the first 22 against teams in their own division. Astros in Atlanta, the first teams they'll face. The Astros are here for four. We'll show you the Saturday game on TSN. And then it's off to the launching pad in Atlanta. And we'll show you a pair of games there on July 3rd and 4th. And there'll be some fireworks on the 4th. And you might want to have some lemonade ready for those games because it's likely to be hot. Atlanta with an... Maybe not a good ball club, but an interesting one with some young pitchers yeah. making name for themselves in the National League. Lilliquist, Gat, Flavin, Schmaltz. Nelson Santavania is thrown out, so it's a clean slate for Jeff Innes in his first inning of work as he gets the Montreal Expos in order. And after eight, it's the Expos by four. Pasquale Perez is three outs away from nailing this one down. This is Labatt Expos Baseball on TSN. This update is brought to you by Mazda. The cars and trucks backed by the best warranty in the business. That's the Mazda way. Let's correct a score we gave you a little bit earlier. Montreal native Martin Lorando did indeed win his first round match on the grass courts of Wimbledon today. He beat Jorge Lorzano of Mexico by scores of 6-2, 6-4, and 6-3. And so Martin Lorando has moved on to the next round. Chris Pridham, of course, fell in straight sets to second-seeded Stefan Edberg. Let's get you caught up as well on what's going on at Wrigley Field in Chicago. Cubs at home to Pittsburgh. Pirates playing their first game ever under the lights at Wrigley. Top of the uh, fifth inning, 2-0 Pittsburgh. Ray Quinones, though, can't make the play. 
play here off the bat of Vance Law. And a couple of batters later, Law's in scoring position with Jerome Walton at the plate. And the young center fielder slaps one down the left field line past Bobby Bonilla. It's 2-1. to one. Pittsburgh now playing in the eighth inning at Chicago. And we'll get you back to uh, Montreal in a moment as you look at Philadelphia leading the St. Louis in the fourth. Dave Magadan will lead off the ninth inning for the New York Mets against Pasquale Perez, who's looking for his first complete game of this season. Magadan has a double in three trips. The Expos are looking for their fourth straight win, and if they can hang on to this lead and win this one in the eighth inning, Pittsburgh leading Chicago 2-1. to one. The Expos could have first place all to themselves, a half game up on Chicago and the Mets. Just in case, Tim Burke warming up down to the bullpen. The Expos' bullpen has put it together after struggling for a while. Burke really never did have big problems. But the bullpen has gone 15 and a half, 15 and a half, 15 and a third innings of consecutive shutout baseball. I'll tell you what, when they start giving you only two outs in inning, it's yeah. going to be very tough to score. Runs will really yeah, go down. Open will really be tough. <laughs> two and two is the count to Dave Magadan. Eight strikeouts tonight for Pasquale. His career high is 11. 87 against the Chicago Cubs. Strikeout number nine. Slider still working in the ninth inning. Magadan thinking fastball commits himself just a little bit too far. He has had his great slider. He's used his Pasquale pitch. He's been as animated as ever on the mound. It appears that Pasquale Perez, who had some troubles this season, is truly back and in fine form. Howard Johnson, the single struck out, grounded out. You'll remember he singled on one of those Pasquale blooper pitches in the seventh. 1-0 and is the count. If the Expos win this game, Buck Rogers will be just one win away from the 500th of his managerial career. A milestone he could reach tomorrow night. Counts 1-1. One and one. Here's the Perez 1-1 one, one pitch. Misses ball 2-2-1. Two, two and one. So the Expo starting pitching after losing two out of three to the Mets at Shea Stadium. He's on the brink of putting the Expos into first place. Nasty slider to Howard Johnson. Two and two. Johnson stays alive, fouling off the 2-2 pitch. The only time this hurts worse oh. is in April <laughs> when it's about 38 degrees and you're playing. 
Been a tough night on the Mets. Woo. Jeffries was knocked cuckoo by Andres Galarraga. Gooden was knocked out of the game by the Expos in the fourth. Barry Lyons took a foul tip off a toe. Howard Johnson's trying to self-destruct at the plate. And Pasquale will now try and help his cause. The slider, and he struck him out. Strikeout number 10. Two away in the ninth inning, Expos 5, Mets 1. You know, those pitchers do it every time. Once you foul a ball off your foot, they come back with another pitch that's low it in. And you're hesitant to really go and get it. And Howard Johnson becomes the double-digit strikeout for Pasquale Perez. Now just one away from his career high. And one away from striking out the side. And finishing off this game. Ball one to Kevin McReynolds. McReynolds is flied out and grounded out twice. He's 0 for 3. Fly ball. Foul territory in right and just out of play. Strike one, one and one. <laughs> so Pasquale still has a chance to get that 11th strikeout. Pasquale's thrown 103 pitches tonight. Not an extremely high total. He's given up five hits. He's had great control. Only 26 of the pitches he's thrown tonight have been for balls. One that got away was a home run ball to Kevin Elston. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Now it's a ball and two strikes as McReynolds fouls it away. And the fans at the Big O want the strikeout. They're on their feet. Here's the one, two. They may get their wish. the ninth 5-1 Expo lead here's the one two pitch two and two the side in the ninth inning matched a career high with 11 strikeouts and the Expos have defeated the New York Mets and Dwight Gooden 5 to 1. The Cubs are still playing. They're trailing 2-1 in the eighth. The Expos has defeated the Mets. Pasquale Perez struck out 11, has a complete game victory, and the Expo pitching staff has allowed just one run in the last 31 innings it's pitched. The final score from Olympic Stadium in Montreal, Pasquale Perez in the Expos 5, Doc Gooden in the Mets 1. This is Labatt Expos Baseball on TSN. The Cubs are trailing in the eighth. The Mets have gone down to the Expos 5-1 in Montreal. The Expos could, by the time this night of baseball is over, be all alone in first place in the National League East. They've won four in a row and start off a series with the New York Mets with a 5-1 victory. All of the runs came in one inning, and Spike Owen delivered a big blow, a three-run home run. 
congratulations on the victory. It must feel doubly good because not only is this a team that is a tough team and that you have to beat, but you are facing Doc Gooden and you get the big win tonight. Well, it, it really is. We, we knew that we had our work cut out for us anytime you face a pitcher like uh, Doc. And he was throwing the ball well, and we were just able to get to him there in the one inning and get him out of the ball game. And uh, Pasquale did a super job. We played well defensively, and uh, it's, it's a nice win. Spike, tell us about the home run. It looked like he threw you something inside, and you were kind of pulling off of it and really got out in front. Well, it, it was. Uh, you know, Doc works me hard in. The first A.B., he was throwing me cutters in, and, uh, you know, and I knew that he was going to come right at me. So it's kind of one of those swings that you start a little early and hope that he throws it to where you're swinging. And unfortunately, I hit the ball well enough to get out. Do you feel like this team is really running in all cylinders now for a while it seemed the pitchers were having a great time and the hitters weren't and then the hitters would get going and the pitchers wouldn't be great but on the weekend everything was going and it was tonight too well it, it is and I think uh, basically we just feel like we're going to win the ball game and that's the feeling that we have to get we don't uh, need to panic or feel like we're going to win uh, uh, have to score five runs or uh, the pitching's going to have to shut people out, you know, as long as they can keep us in ball games, which they've been doing a, a great job of. We know we're going to scratch out some runs here or there, and uh, that, that's the uh, biggest part of winning. Spike, great game tonight. Congratulations, and thanks for coming out to join us. All right, thank you. Spike Owen, who had a three-run home run as part of an Expos five-run fourth inning on the way to a 5-1 win over the New York Mets at Olympic Stadium. This is Levat Expos Baseball on TSN. Now it's time for the TSN Turning Point, brought to you tonight by Converse. The Expos were trailing one to nothing in the fourth inning, and Doc Gooden appeared to have all his best stuff, but Andres Galarraga had doubled and was standing on second base when Tim Raines came to the plate with one away in the Expos' half of the fourth inning. Raines lined a base hit into right field. Galarraga came around to score the tying run. The Expos went on to have a five-run, four-hit, fourth inning and Chase Gooden from the game they won it five to one Reigns base hit to score the tying run was our turning point a cash donation will be made to amateur sport on behalf of TSN and Converse Converse king of the hill the final score from Olympic Stadium the Expos five and the Mets one this is Labatt Expos baseball on TSN You've been watching Expos Baseball on TSN. Tonight, the Montreal Expos entertain the New York Mets from Olympic Stadium. TSN Expos Baseball has been brought to you by Labatt's Blue, the clean, true taste of Canada, and by Esso, retailers and agents going that extra mile. Expos Baseball is a presentation of the Sports Network. It's protected by copyright. Any use of this broadcast without permission is prohibited. The final score in the first game of a three-game series between the Mets and the Expos, Montreal 5 and New York 1. The winning picture tonight, Pasquale Perez is now four and eight. The loser, Doc Gooden, is now nine and three. The Labatt player of the game tonight for the Montreal Expos is Pasquale Perez, who pitched his first complete game of the season, struck out 11 and gave up just five hits. He'll receive Weed Eater, Canada's number one trimmers. And for the New York Mets, it's shortstop Kevin Elster, who had a pair of hits, one of them a solo home run for the Mets' only run. Kevin will receive Cannon's new Prima shot. All members of the Expo's pitching staff receive an assortment of gifts presented by Duracell, the one that lasts, and from the makers of Absorbing Junior, Canada's number one selling liniment. Our next Expo telecast on TSN will be Canada Day, Saturday, July the 1st at 7.30 Eastern Time, when the Expos will host the Houston Astros. The next Blue Jay telecast on TSN will be tomorrow night, the 27th at 7.30 Eastern, when the Baltimore Orioles will play host to Toronto. Stay tuned now for Extra Innings, our phone-in show.